My name is Will Tong. I am a research scientist at KLA 10 Core working in the REBEL program. Um, I'm a material scientist and primarily I work on uh, the uh, all, basically all, all the materials issues and especially uh, what's involved in the uh, digital pixel generator which is the uh, um, MEMS part of uh, the Rebel system. The relentless march to uh, Moore's Law gets to be more and more challenging. I mean, we're really approaching the size of the atom here, you know, when it comes to pattern density. So, um, you know, for optical lithography, uh, it gets to be more and more difficult and uh, because of Rayleigh's Law. Um, and because you know, the feature size is smaller than the wavelength and um, that's why we have UV but UV uh, brings on another set of challenge and and um, now it's actually there's a big effort going on but so for some of us uh, we have other alternatives that we think can uh, potentially either be EUV or complement EUV in uh, cost and uh, performance. I think uh, there's a certain um, comfort level with uh, optical lithography and EUV uh, still, even though uh, the working principle is by reflection and not by transmission, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the the workers in this field still feel more comfortable with it. Um, and it's getting a lion's share of the resources in development uh, in our field. Um, but I think all the, um, there are three, actually three main um, uh, alternative lithographic techniques to UV lithography, and they are nano imprint, uh, directed self-assembly, and uh, what I work on, which is uh, direct write or massless e-beam lithography. In short, I think uh, directed self-assembly is double patterning on steroids and, and done at a very low cost. I mean, of course, it's, it's not as, um, as clean or you know, as defect-free as double patterning, but just the, the cost is so much lower that, uh, and also the resolution potential. I mean, double patterning is you're still limited by the wavelength of a light. This, uh, the DSA, is um, you're really limited by the chemistry, uh, so, so you, you can potentially achieve a higher resolution. And, and people are talking about doing not just double patterning, but quadruple uh, patterning, etc. And you know, it's a ver very, very interesting technology. Um, it actually uh, relies on chemistry to basically do double patterning and also to do uh, you know fixing line edge rust, uh, fixing non uniformity in in uh, patterning so uh, and I'm a chemist so I kind of like that uh, and and because it ba it's based on chemistry not expensive optics um, so the cost is low uh, but on the other hand uh, the throughput is low uh, because you rely on uh, thermodynamics to achieve your uniformity so a lot of uh, uh, processes have to be have to take a long time and also um, you know so defect de and, and so you, it can lead to number um, a larger number of defects so defect inspection is very important uh, we have quite a few talks in our session focusing on that so that's a really hot field right now um, of course, defect inspection is what KLA Tanco does, so I think we're we're, we're interested in that. For nano imprint, um, the you know again, actually cost is lower, but the the issue is defects. Um, um, and um, in our session, uh, S V Srinivasan from uh, molecular molecular imprints has shown a gradual. Uh, exponential decrease of, of defect level for the for the mask or the template so you know good progress is being made there uh, but still you know I think the, the the industry the comfort level level with nano imprint is not very high still so they still have to work hard and they're actually looking for other applications uh, such as pattern media and roll-to-roll -roll printing, uh, you know, for their applications. Um, for e-beam lithography, um, a big part of it is an integration. I mean, e-beam lithography has exist existed a long time. Um, it has much higher resolution than optical, um, but of course, uh, the throughput is low. So at KLA, we're trying to devise a, a multi-column strategy uh, to boost the throughput and, and also uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the tech, new uh, 
a lot of the new direct massless lithography, and massless means you don't have to mass, so you save money there, um, involves a lot of advanced MEM structures. And there, I think there's a lot of room for uh, development and new ideas and, and uh, new work. Lithography is essentially, um, talking in very, very fundamental terms, is uh, it's just drawing the really fine circuit lines. And the finer you can draw the line, the more circuits you can cram into a single chip, then the more powerful the chip is. And that's why, you know, in the 70s, I remember my dad actually had a little Casio calculator and it can do calculation. He was really proud of that. But the same thing now, you know, an iPhone, it can do, I don't know, I think probably a billion times as much. And, uh, so, uh, you know, that's Moore's Law, and, and, uh, and one reason, by no means the only reason, uh, that, uh, this, that, the we're, that the performance has been uh, improved so much is because we can cram more and more circuits into the same chip, and that's due to uh, the advancement in lithography.